Let's talk about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. First, give me your thoughts on Afterlife. That's that's the first one. Yeah, so uh, I, I watched Afterlife for, for the, the first movie. time this week. It was all right. It wasn't my favorite Ghostbusters. I thought it was entertaining for sure, and mm -hmm. but I would say it's pretty average. I'd probably give that one like a five. Mm -hmm. It okay. seemed like some of the older characters, they only showed up like right at the end, so it, they kind of felt shoehorned in a little bit. I didn't mind the new mm -hmm. family, getting to know them, and the, the big bad was all right. It kind of felt like similar to the first Ghostbusters, for sure. at, at least for the bad guy, but I would say it was a pretty average movie. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree, and I... I was just curious because like you saw in Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like a lot of people gave this like a really good score and I actually like wasn't the biggest fan of it like I didn't hate it but it, like you kind of said it's just very average like it was kind of cool because you're in a different place for mm -hmm. a movie not New York but I don't know I agree with you and I know a lot of people liked it I feel like it maybe was made for like a younger generation and maybe they liked it more or something I don't know maybe well going into this okay I'll let you start with this with Frozen Empire okay so Ghostbusters Frozen an empire we'll give our scores and our overall thoughts and then we'll warn before spoilers i also thought this one was a pretty average movie with some weird pacing like the first hour of the movie there's not a lot of action there's not a lot of ghosts the human parts mm -hmm. weren't that interesting to me there's just like so many characters they kept all the characters from the other one and added a bunch more and it just feels like bloated mm -hmm. with characters it just kind of feels like a very forgettable popcorn movie where you just go watch it and then don't rem i, I I don't think I'm going to remember this in a month's time. It made me <laughs> chuckle a few times. There were some yeah. okay parts. The action, when it gets there, it looked fine. It, like the CG looked pretty good, but I don't know. It didn't really resonate with me. I think I'd give this a four. I think I liked the other one a little mm -hmm. better, but like I just said, that other one was pretty average. So <laughs> I yeah. think this movie has some issues. Oh, okay. I agree to an extent. I think I liked it a little more than you did. I think it had pacing issues, like you said. I liked the beginning. The middle kind of dragged, and the end was okay. There was a lot of characters. There was some writing that was weird to me or lazy, which we can get into in spoilers. Mm -hmm. But I actually I enjoyed it for what it was. Like I thought it was average. I would probably give this. I was floating between a five and a six, and I'll say I'll say five. You know, on our scale, five is kind of bare average. So like I. I would give this yeah. a five out of ten average uh, i like this one more than afterlife oh okay just okay average you're right forgettable but yeah. i had fun with it yeah there and my theater was slammed oh really mine was Worst. empty <laughs> really yeah when did you see this one at like four uh, on a, Man, like on a, a saturday yeah when i owned my my theater i went like at a one o'clock showing like in the cynic maybe it's because of cynic capri like a big thing or like oh, like maybe. a cynic capri but like it was i haven't seen it that busy since oppenheimer like that's how busy it was oh wow but anyways yeah let's get into spoilers yeah so spoiler alert for ghostbusters frozen empire frozen empire Empire. I don't like the name of that movie, by the way. It sounds uh sounds generic, doesn't it? It definitely um, does. So I I guess just the couple negatives I had just to start off the bat. Well, number one, this is just nitpicky, but like the Slimer goes like he's a shoot, he's on the poster, you know, the one that eats all the, the food. Yeah. He's a fan favorite, but there is no point in him being in the movie. And how did he even get in the attic? They never explained anything. Yeah, they never explained that. Honestly, that part. This kind of shows my issues with this. I feel like Finn Wolfhard, whatever his name is in the movie, didn't really need to be in this movie. Like, what did he do? Yeah. The Slimer was, ghost you, didn't need to be in it. What did he do? Like, I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff that... You just went Afterlife, right? So it wasn't, wasn't the Stranger Things kid, wasn't he more involved in that movie than this one? Yeah, he was. And I think that's just an issue with the too many characters. There's just not enough time to have mm -hmm. everybody be important. Like even, even Lucky even is Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, yeah. They just don't do much. There's a point in the middle of the movie where Paul Rudd, the mom, and the Stranger Things kid wasn't in it for like 30 minutes. Like uh, like that whole middle part where it was uh, what's her face? Phoebe. Phoebe yeah, with, with the ghost and kind of doing her own thing and, and uh, going it, to that definitely museum stuff, you're right yeah that's right going to the museum which i actually like her character yeah i think she's and one I of the stronger they, characters i was gonna say i think that's why they focused more on her this yeah. movie because i feel like people liked her 
in the last movie too, from what I remember. I feel like she's more of the main character in both the movies because she has more of a connection to like Egon. She seems like, like she has like that quirkiness and yeah, smart. She kind of takes some of his traits. Uh, so how did you feel about her and that relationship with the girl ghost or that that whole plot? I thought that could have been the most interesting part of the movie, and it was interesting. Mm -hmm. The themes there of a ghost being the only person who really connects with her and understands her because mm -hmm. she is she is weird and different than the other human characters so i did like some of those parts there's a point in the movie where the big bad's plan comes together and it just like mm -hmm. feels like it's out of left field why would that be yeah. the plan when it just seems like such a weird character choice so at one point she decides to get in one of the machines and like basically become a ghost for two minutes so that she can get closer to the ghost lady and it just i don't know it doesn't so the big bad guy was expecting her to do that that just seems kind of out of left field to me there's a couple times with that when that little follower ghost so was was that follower ghost expecting them to go to the library to listen to that exact yeah. monologue and that in that yeah. thing to take back you know what i mean like that's another what, part what's the odds that i had the ghost like with. knowing they're gonna go do that and then nothing happens with that the thing just breaks well, and then so like was that plan one and then it didn't work and then the backup was just hope she becomes a ghost so that you can control her ghost and human well, body at the same time i don't know i think the ghost he must have memorized the chant or something and when you got when he possessed a girl oh. it's just everything had to be so circumstantial because they needed that chant and then they needed the girl to go into that experimental thing where she could separate her soul from her body like what's the odds of all of this and, like how would you know that you know what i mean like, and if it was just to memorize the chant why did that ghost take over the trash bag and try and carry it out i don't know it just that is true yeah i don't i don't know about that <laughs> yeah it, it just got, doesn't seem for that it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me no yeah i i, I don't know yeah. <laughs> so the whole, I don't know. So all that's, and then that laboratory and stuff, again, cool ideas with the ghosts being locked up and stuff, but it kind of goes nowhere. Like it almost feels like this, and maybe it's just, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe this is just my thinking with everything now. It almost feels like this would have been better as a TV show. Or even now, like instead of another sequel, have a TV show with like them busting ghosts, right? And they have that laboratory and they lock up ghosts and I don't know. Yeah, and the lab was also interesting to me because I feel like a spe there was one ghost in particular who looked like really creepy and was yeah. all in shadow. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to know more about that. But we just see it like one time after that where it almost escapes and then never hear about about it or see it again and oh that scene it, was interesting though like it was creepy i liked that scene yeah so i don't know it just feels like they were setting some things up and then had to cut them for time maybe i agree i mean you're right I, it, you're 100 right as far as writing goes and characters everything's gumbled everything's a mess some plot lines go to dead end or don't make sense or very circumstantial the characters are okay at best but pointless some of them like yeah. you said they're stranger things kid i like paul rudd but again his character wasn't really in it much neither was the mom yeah i like uh, paul rudd too the original characters. i feel like paul rudd was just playing himself which i like and i thought yeah. he was oh, yeah, decent like, yeah. in both movies but yeah he didn't have that much to do like he was he had some funny moments yeah and uh like it's paul rudd like you said he's good uh, right. The older characters were great. Like I think the one thing I think they did do pretty decent at is uh, kind of balancing the new with the old. Like it did make the movie overstuffed, but I mean they did please. I mean I saw a lot of older people in my audience, <laughs> and I think they pleased that older audience with some of these with the original characters. I agree, oh. except for the Bill Murray parts felt random. I think that's the yeah, right term. It, uh, it was like sporadic. He showed up a couple times, and it just I like Bill Murray, but. <laughs> It kind of seemed weird how he just showed up at a test and then disappeared for a while and then showed up at the yeah. end. I almost wonder if Bill Murray like couldn't be there for most of it or I don't I'm I'm curious. Yeah, that's kind of what it felt uh, like. But yeah, I do. I will agree. say though, his lines his lines cracked me up. I'm like, man, I wish he was in it more. Yeah, true. Like at the end when he was saying oh, he said some jokes. Uh, well, there was one joke that cracked me up. He said something about oh, he was like a horny joke. I was kind of oh, chuckling. Yeah, like, tall, dark, and horny. Yeah. But I agree. Like it, he kind of randomly shows up, spats out some funny lines, and then leaves. Which I mean can work for Bill oh. Murray. It's just kind of a nitpick yeah. where yeah. he just kind of pops up randomly. Oh, for sure. Like he wasn't necessarily like 
important to the story. The other two were weaved in a little bit, but Bill Murray kind of just felt shoehorned in. But I will say that the new character, the uh, male Nanjiani's character, the, the fire master, yeah, uh, he was hilarious, man. Yeah, I really like Kumail Nanjiani. He's hilarious in everything. So he was cracking me up, dude. Yeah. I was- he was funny. I, with it. I think he yeah, was the funniest was, part of the movie. He has such good because I remember him in uh, Silicon Valley, right? Oh yeah, he's funny in Silicon yeah. Valley. Yeah. yeah, he just has such good. Like he plays well off of other people too. Yeah, he does. And it seems like a lot of his stuff was probably kind of improvised, <laughs> like some yeah, of his yeah. silly stuff. He was cracking me up with this. You know, his negotiating. Yeah, I can't part ways with that. Uh, <laughs> maybe forty dollars. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty sentimental to me. <laughs> and then the, the little his grandma's dungeon that was pretty funny and they're yeah like, oh, that was sex funny. Dungeon. Just, like locked up and hidden and the sex judges have chains <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it should <laughs> oh that's yeah he was funny it, maybe it's because i'm watching core but all i could think of is firebending when he was doing, it, yeah i'm like oh he's a firebender <laughs> And then also, there's two things. So number one, with the with the fire master, it totally felt like Avatar. It's kind of, I think it's kind of cool, like having like a someone with kind of like powers. I mean, if you're kind of in like a mystical world of ghosts and stuff, like it makes sense that someone would be a protector or something weird like that. Yeah, that does make sense, and it is interesting. I feel like the execution was a little rushed, but I oh, do yeah. like the idea for sure. Yeah, the idea. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying. And then the other thing too, when they went that that laboratory and there were when they're showing uh paul run them oh we we built a new thing you could deposit the ghost or whatever all i could think of is luigi's mansion <laughs> <laughs> that's true i didn't is think it, about like, that depositing it there that it's extracting go through a machine and then you put the thing in there like oh it's like so it's like luigi's mansion <laughs> <laughs> but uh like it had its, i thought it had its funny moments like even it the, did yeah even the ghost going to like that smoke shop and say are you the fire master like that reminded me of the kind of like the original movie kind of humor that did yeah that was funny because it was literally called fire master Master Vapes or whatever Fire <laughs> yeah. Master smoke shop and then it thinks that's the Fire Master. That's pretty funny. <laughs> So like I liked the little bits of humor I had it, it, but at the same time it just made me want to watch the original. I agree instead with that. Of this. I agree with that. Yeah. Is that original? I had I didn't rewatch it before this, but I rewatched it. Was it last Halloween or the Halloween before? And God, that one's so it's just timeless. It's hilarious. It's a little creepy, but it's mostly a comedy. Like it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And I, this one. This one did have its have funny moments, humor. but yeah, the humor it did feel different than the original for sure. I feel like the Bill Murray kinda, parts, although they were random those definitely felt like the most original parts to me like like the original movie oh, yeah kinda. i mean yeah it, his little jokes and quips like even him showing up and finding that liquor he hid and cracking jokes like okay see this is ghostbusters maybe yeah. it's bill murray maybe bill murray is maybe the original four they just shouldn't do it without the original well obviously they can't with uh egon. what's that ivan or but yeah you got yeah but the other three maybe i don't know maybe they're never going to recapture the original ever no matter what yeah i mean they've had a lot of chances at it and they still haven't gotten it completely right so did you see the ghostbusters the 2016 one the all-female one yeah i did i don't remember hardly anything about it either i remember i don't remember anything i I kind of remember it similar to this one where i thought there were some funny moments like i remember thor's character Mm -hmm. chris hemsworth i thought he was funny but i don't really remember much else i don't remember i don't remember the villain in it or bad ghost i don't remember a single thing except for i do remember chris hemsworth a little bit i seriously don't remember anything about that movie yeah i feel like that's this is going to be similar to that for me yeah i i I think so too i think i agree with you the concept of her having like a relationship with the ghost girl or like the only one that understands you know that's what could have been its own plot in its own thing and her separating her soul from her body that could have been a whole plot and movie itself yeah with like interesting implications but it just since mm-hmm. they had so much going on they couldn't really focus on it too much yeah which i guess you're right is the biggest problem is overstuffed the writing is uh not the greatest the characters go missing every once in a while and so character. i had one other big issue with the ending the two things but they're really kind of the same thing so when i forget the big bad ghost's name but when it shows up at the fire station so phoebe has prepared her electron pack with brass well, so that I, it's I, like i don't know what you're gonna say yeah so that it's like stronger and it can actually work on it and then it shows up 
and everybody else goes to fight it off, and she just stands yeah. there in the basement talking while they get the same thing. <laughs> Why wasn't she up there when he came? I don't know. They're all getting frozen and their butts beating everything, and she's the one with the rats in her back. Yeah, why didn't it could have been why wasn't she up there or why didn't somebody else do it also? It looked like they had plenty of brass. It, yeah. That drove me nuts. I was yeah. sick of that. I'm like, and then after everyone's frozen and after the girl, her ghost friend kind of betrays her and releases everything, then she goes up. Like, wasn't she concerned yeah. what was going on upstairs yeah, with everyone? No, no kidding. Uh, anyways, know. what was your other issue? It and then I, I guess that part was just so that this next thing that I have an issue with could happen where the ghost friend who betrayed her then betrays the oh. big bad guy and it just it didn't mm -hmm. feel that earned to me there was like one line that I guess was supposed to like strike a chord with her that she has to do it herself and that's what made her change sides again but it just yeah. felt kind of like a deus ex machina comes out of nowhere mm -hmm. it just had to happen for it to work it just didn't feel I earned agree. to me no because we saw the bits and pieces like her relationship with uh phoebe we saw that like that was pretty decent but we never i think we got one scene with like the bad ghost guy frozen king whatever talking to her when she's walking down the street i think that's the only time where they actually like talk so we didn't see that side of it really we it, just got it it through the ghost girl's dialogue of what he had promised her or something yeah like we didn't like if we, we saw more scenes with her like talking to the frozen king and him like manipulating her and like we could see why she'd be doing this more mm -hmm. maybe scaring her to the point where like if i don't do this i'll never see you know what i mean i don't know but we didn't see any of that so i agree yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of issues. Like I could see someone kind of turning off their brain and really enjoying this movie, so I get why some audience yeah. scores are higher. If you don't think about it too hard, it is a pretty fun movie. It is slower in the middle. Part of my it issue... Just, it slogs a little bit in the yeah. middle, for sure. Like, at the start, there is a ghost chase, but honestly, after just watching Afterlife, it was basically the exact same ghost chase that was in Afterlife, just with the entire family, instead of just Finn and Phoebe. I don't yeah. know his name in the movie, because... And there's not really any ghost busting. <laughs> Besides that, yeah. is there any other ghosts they bust? Not really. It's just the ones you you see ghosts in the lab, and then the marshmallow guys, and then nothing else really the until little minions. The, yeah <laughs> they pretty and, much work and even when the big bad guy like breaks them all out you don't see that many after that it's just him yeah you literally actually now i think about it besides that ghost at the beginning the slime the, the slime slimer. and even then they don't really bust him like he's up in the attic doing his thing Finn it's just a dragon thing fails. at the beginning is that it i'm trying to think yeah is that the only one they actually like capture besides the guy at the end the, the main frozen guy at the end I think so. Yeah, there's like, now I think about it, there's literally no like ghost busting. Like in the original, like, yes, there's an overarching plot of obviously the big bad, but like in the middle of the movie, they showed him like, you know, oh, the fire station yeah, or, or, or this school needs my help. You need to come over here. We got a ghost over here. You yeah. know, a famous one going to the library. It showed them in the middle of the movie doing all these, getting these calls. Right? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to call? <laughs> yeah, right. This one didn't. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. But that being said, like, I, I would get, yeah, I could see why I gave it a four. I'll give it a five because I, I enjoyed it. I had fun. It was a freezing Saturday afternoon and I got to stay in a nice warm movie <laughs> theater and watch a movie with Paul popcorn so like it it was a stupid little popcorn flick and i will ever watch this again yeah probably I, <laughs> I don't think i will but you know i did have some some fun watching it it was enjoyable at some parts it wasn't a horrible yeah. movie for sure i just had my that's issues all, that's with it i mean yeah like it was fun like i'll, I'll tell you this like I would go see another Ghostbusters movie. Like, this one didn't scare me off to where I wouldn't go see another one. Sure, yeah, I could agree with that. But yeah, that's about it. I do have a question. Why mm -hmm. was Lucky in this movie? There's not really a good reason for her to be in New York. She doesn't really do anything. There's just already so many characters. They could have easily just been like, oh yeah, she's still in Oklahoma. I, I don't know. Lucky was pointless i will say i did like that uh that kid was a podcast, that podcast. Was he was pretty funny yeah he's I, another one that i don't fully know why he's there but I, no no i don't either it kind of makes sense he's working with dan Aykroyd because they both do like the weird occult podcasting stuff so that's mm -hmm. a little there's a little more there as to why he's at least there. yeah at least there's a point and i will say out of all like the new characters like i like him as far as like if he was to bust ghost with them like he would be a funny character to do it with whereas lucky i agree like what like what <laughs> it felt 
also the other character, which was funny, but just kind of felt shoehorned in too, is the at the end battle he shows up and then he gets hit by the slime or ghost or whatever, and then remember he shows up afterwards like what happened? You know, kind of talking about the guy that inspects the the he British in the laboratory with Lucky. Yeah, the British guy. I thought he was funny yeah. and I liked that actor, but yeah, he's it's just in a movie yeah, with like too many too. characters, just not enough time, not enough screen time. Like, I feel the concept like. is interesting, like that laboratory and have like that's why I think a show would be kind of cool, like have that laboratory as the main base and just have them go busting ghosts and you know you can have an overarching season plot of one of the ghosts trying to break it i don't know it'd be like a cool show i feel like i feel like with this many characters and possibilities mm-hmm. of storylines it, it probably would have worked better as a show yeah that's pretty much all i got with this it was it was okay like would i rush someone to go out and see it no no like honestly you could probably wait until it's on streaming if i'm being honest i agree pretty much the same no yeah.